Welcome everyone, this is How To Unity. I'm gonna be going over the fundamentals of game development in Unity. So we're gonna be covering everything from the character controller to collectible items, user interface, and much, much more. Today we're starting off with a nice little 2D character controller here. So you can see I got this little alien guy who can run around. As you can probably see, I don't have jumping implemented just yet. I'm gonna be covering that in a separate episode dedicated strictly to physics and jumping uh, in games. All right, so I'm in a brand new Unity project here. The only thing I've changed is on the main camera, the background color. I've made this a solid color and I've just made it pitch black um, just to make this a little bit more uh, aesthetic, I guess. <laughs> um, but you can do whatever background you want for this project. So the sprites I have loaded are just free Kenny asset sprites. The link will be in the description to download these if you choose to. Let's get started with setting up some animations and our character. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to be using this green alien dude right here. Make sure your import settings are correct. So since my sprites are pixel art, Oh, you want to make sure your filter mode is set to point no filter. Wrap mode is obviously leave it as clamp and make sure compression is none. The other thing you want to make sure of is that your pixels per unit should be the same size as your sprites, um, specifically probably the X axis of your sprites. So my sprites are 24 by 24 pixels. So obviously I want my pixels per unit to be 24. Now with that said, to create the animation, I'm going to start with the walking animation. So I've got two frames here. As separate sprites, I want to select my first frame, hit control, and then select my next frame, and then drag from the first frame to my game hierarchy here. And that will pop up this window asking me to create a .anim file. So the anim file is obviously an animation. So I'm going to call this uh, player walk. And then press enter, and that will save it. Now that's going to give us a character controller, uh, sorry, a animator controller for our character, as well as our first animation. I'm going to select both of these and just drag these into my assets folder just so we can keep our folders clean as well. So if I go to my assets folder here, I now have the character animation controller as well as the animation here. Now, if I want to see a preview of this, I just have to drag from my window here to here, um, to this preview area. And one thing you want to make sure is that loop time is on. This should be on by default, but if it's not, just tick that um, box there. And if I press play, you can see that I have a little alien dude jumping around um, with two frames. Now, if you have more than two frames, you want to select all of them, just like how we did earlier, and drag all of them up to the um, hierarchy window, and that will give you a smooth looking animation. However, this looks much more like a Mario style 2D platformer here. So <laughs> I'm going to stick with this. I'm just going to rename my character here to um, player. That will be default rename to the first keyframe in your animation. Save your project and drag your player from the hierarchy window into your assets folder. So that's going to give us a um, prefab. And then I want to also uh, rename the character controller here to player. Um, anim controller, I guess I'll call it. Now, we're not going to mess with that just yet. The one thing I want to do is create an idle animation as well. So if I click on the player and then go to the animator window, so animation window, if you don't have this window loaded, you can go to window, animation, and animation, or just do control six. Um, and then I'm going to click this drop down here and go create new clip and just call this player idle. And then here we can create another animation. I'm just going to go to my player walk and take the first keyframe, do control C to copy and then paste here as well. And that's just going to give us my first keyframe there. Now that's our animations set up. So the question is, where did that save? I think that might have saved into here. Yes, it did. So I'm just going to drag that animation back to my assets folder here as well. Boom. Now I got all my animations in the same place. Realistically, you'd want to create another folder uh, specifically for your player and have all your player information there. So your scripts, animation, and um, everything there. Or you can just have a separate folder with all the animations in your game. Um, but I don't recommend that because it might get a little bit messy later on. Um, that said, now I want to open up the animator. So I'm just going to double click this. And that's going to bring this window up for me. I have have all my animation stuff docked into this bottom window here. Uh, I recommend doing the same just to follow along. Now you can see that one of our animation states here is orange and the other one is gray. We're actually going to select both of these and pre do um, press delete. Now I'm going to right click and say create state and then new from a blend tree. Now what a blend tree is, is that it's a state in your animation which is able to transition between states depending on the value. And I'll show you guys how it works. It's quite simple. It sounds a little bit complicated, but 
you um you'll see that it's not it's a much easier method to do walking and idling in a combined sort of state. So speed can remain one, that's fine. But name, I want to change this to um, motion. Uh, in fact, let's do, call this movement is probably a better name. Now, if I double click this orange state, we have this new Blintry node here. Um, what I have to do is click this and press the plus arrow up here and say add motion field. And here we can choose a motion or an animation. And the first one I'm going to choose is idle. So now this is going to work pretty normally. Um, if I press play here, nothing's going to change as the slider increases. Um, it's the exact same. However, if I add another one, so another add motion field and make this player walk. So you'll see now we have this um, little blue graph up here. That's You can mess around with this. This basically says um, at what state does the animation transform to the next one. Um, so you can see here, at this middle section, the player in the preview down here will start walking. Um, and then as we go here, is at max walking speed. Um, and then past beyond this halfway point, he's back to idle. So now we have this new parameter here as well. So if you're a default in the layers tab, just click on parameters and you'll see that we have this number here being zero and it's called blender, um, blender, blend. <laughs> and I'm going to call this velocity. So this velocity is obviously the velocity of our player. Um, and you'll see here now it's changes. So as velocity increases, our player starts walking. As he decreases, then he slows down walking and eventually stops. So that's all good and all, but how do we actually make this work in the player scene? Because at the moment, nothing's going to happen if we press play. He'll just be stuck in idle. So what we have to do is create a script which can control our animations and movement and basically our player in general. So I'm going to right click, go to create and do C sharp script. And I'm going to call this player controller. Now I'm going to double click that script and that's going to open it up in Visual Studio for me. Now I made, I made a typo, so I'm going to fix that here in the script name there. Now we don't need using system.collections.generic and we also don't need the starting code just yet. Perfect. Now the first thing we want to do is add a reference to our animator. So I'm going to go private animator and call this just anim. Um, now in the start function, we want to set this. So uh, as soon as our game starts, in the first uh, frame of our game, we want to say anim equals get component animator, like so. Um, and then we want to also have a reference to our uh, parameter in our animator, which was called velocity. So for the sake of being able to view this in the expector, I'm going to just call uh, make this public for now. Um, and make this a public float called velocity. And for now, this will do. Um, since we're only doing horizontal movement for this episode, this will be work just fine. If you're doing x-axis and y-axis movement, you'd make this a vector too. Um, but we're not going to worry about that just yet. So in our update function now, I'm going to go avoid update. Start and update are both Unity functions. Um, we don't have to define anything special for them. Um, but I want to say here, float velocity. Actually, I don't have to say float velocity. I can just say velocity equals input. So we're getting some input dot get axis. And I'm going to say get axis raw. And then inside brackets, we want to call the axis name. Make sure you spell this exactly as I have it here. This is referring directly to Unity's input system. So with that done, I can now apply a velocity to our animator. So I have to say anim.setFloat. And we want to spell this exactly how as we have it in our animator as a parameter. So if I head back into Unity, inside the animator, we have this velocity parameter here. So if I double click this and just go to control C, um, or you could just type it again, doesn't really matter as long as, as you type it correctly. Um, and obviously this takes in a float value, which I forgot to give it. I'm just going to give it velocity there. Cool. Now with that done, uh, you'll see that our player, as soon as we press A or D or right or left arrow keys, he should start animating. Uh, one thing you do want to make sure though is you want to make sure that you have the script added. So you're going to drag and drop your script onto here. And that's going to give us this velocity. You don't need to set the value to anything here yet. Um, the code will do that for us. One thing you do want to make sure there is that in overrides, you go here and you press apply all. Um, so that's just the drop down here. And that's just going to apply everything we've done back to our prefab in case we want to add this character to another scene, like another level, for example.
Okay, so now when I press play, when I press D, our pl player should start moving. When I press A, nothing will happen. Now, why is nothing happening is because input uh, takes a value between 0 and 1. Um, so it takes a value between negative 1 and 1. So negative 1 is the negative input, so A, because it's going left. And then D being a positive input because it's going right is 1. And then no input is just 0. What I have to do is pass in a floating point number here. However, since velocity is between minus 1 and 1, but velocity as a parameter is between 0 and 1, it gets a little bit confusing for the animator. So what I have to do is make this the absolute value. So I can just say mathf.abs um, of velocity. So the absolute value just says if it's minus 1, make it 1 again. Um, and you'll see now if I press A or D, the player will start... Um, animating. However, he won't face the right direction. So what I have to also do is make sure that our, uh, that if velocity is not equal to zero, um, so that we're pressing one of the buttons, we want to make sure that our get component sprite renderer dot flip x, and this is going to control which direction that sprite is facing dot flip x equals um, either this is either true or false it's just a checkbox right but we can also pass in a uh, something that returns a true or false and what will return a true or false well it will just be velocity 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 greater than zero does that make sense so velocity greater than zero is either true or it's false if it's true then you want to flip the x um, and you'll see how this comes into I might have written that backwards but I think it should be okay. So, with that line added now as well, our player should face the correct direction as well as animate, but he won't move just yet. So I'm going to save and press play. Cool. And now if I press A, he animates, and then D, he turns the other way and still animates. Perfect. Now we just need to add it so that he can actually move. Um, and to do so, what I'm going to do is give my player a rigid body. So I'm going to go to my player in the game object in this scene and press add component rigid body. Uh, make sure that you're using rigid body 2D. My bad there. So, um, and one thing I do want to turn off is gravity scale just for the purposes of this video. I don't want him falling into the abyss. <laughs> um, however, what I do have to say at the end of my update function is, uh, well, first I need to make a reference to my rigid body. So I want to say private rigid body 2d and just going to call this rb um, and then same way we did the uh, animator i just need to make sure i do rb equals get components rigid body 2d cool and then at the end of my update function i can just do rb dot velocity equals new vector 2 because it's 2D, X and Y. The y, X axis is obviously going to be velocity and the Y axis is going to be zero. Now, that's all good and all. However, there's a few issues with this line here, which I'm going to cover. So this line here that I have highlighted in red, it's going to work in our update function, right? That's fine. However, our update function is frame rate dependent. So if I'm running on 60 frames per second, my player is going to move velocity per frame so per second i'm moving let's say 60 of 60 units okay now let's say i'm um i've got working on 120 frames per second on a different computer every frame we're applying velocity which means i'm moving 120 units per second so the person on 120 frames per second on his screen the game's running two times faster. At least his play is running two times faster. And that's a problem. We don't want that. So we want to use another function called fixed update. Um, void fixed update. And fixed update is not frame rate dependent. This happens after update and it's purely where you want to add all your physics stuff. So I'm just going to cut that line from update and put it inside fixed update. Now that's good and all, but I also want to add a speed control. So let's say I want my player to run faster um, in my game and then slower in a different game, right? I want to be able to control that. So I want to add a public float. And, and I just want to call this move speed. And for now, I'm going to give this a value of 2. Make sure you put F next to it to indicate that it's a floating point number. Um, and then here, I can just say new vector to velocity 
times move speed. Now, another thing we could do is multiply this by time dot delta time, which is more ideal to keep it more um, frame rate independent. Time dot delta time works off computer time, so it is purely, you know, everyone has 24 hours in their day. It's not going to run faster than someone else's computer. <laughs> but that does slow down our um, character a little bit. So we will have to increase this to most likely something like 20. Um, but we'll just test it for now. So I'm going to turn off maximize on play. Um, I'm going to minimize my rigid body here and just keep an eye on my move speed. I may need to modify it. If I press play now, our player should move. As you can see, he's moving, uh, however, very slowly. So if I make this something like 20, still quite slow. And this is a little bit more ideal. Uh, 200 is probably a little bit too fast. Let's make this 100. Now, the speed of your character depends purely on the type of game that you're making. Uh, in some cases, you want your play to move faster than others. Um, in most cases, you just want to sync up with the animation that you have. Now, the thing with this character is that he's very much start-stop. So if I press D, he moves and then stops moving instantly. And uh, now let's say we wanted to create some sort of inertia to slowly increase and slowly decrease our movement. What you could do is just get rid of axis raw and just make it dot get axis. That makes it so that there's a slight blending between um, when you press a key. So it goes from 0 to 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 and then slowly increases um, to 1 over time. So if I press play now, uh, you'll see that not only firstly does our player slowly increase his speed and slowly decrease his speed. Um, let me make this 150 again. <laughs> As you can see, there's a slight slowing down. But the other thing that happens, since we've directly linked our uh, velocity to our animator using a blend state, a blend tree, our animation actually also slowly increases and slowly decreases in speed in the same sort of way. And that's why blend trees are quite useful, especially for 2D and 3D games. That said, that is our player movement done. Uh, as you can see, we've got a, quite a cool little animation happening. I've got an error in my console, but that's purely because of the package manager. I don't need to worry about that. And that's something I should fix up before the next episode. <laughs> that is it for this episode, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. And join the Discord where you can ask me any questions you may have or um, discuss anything else about game dev. Until next time, take care and peace. <laughs>